Thanks for that, Kevin. Back to our top story now. A morning back in June of 2015, the fire at Marshall Square was already out. Crews had started digging through all that rubble. That's when a miracle happened. This is Retta as she was rushed out of her bathroom and into an ambulance that morning. And this is her today when she sat down with our Christy Etheridge. It's a story you'll only see here and what a story she has to tell. Even when everyone else lost hope, officials telling her son she had surely died in the fire. Retta Cadle never did. And today she tells us how she did it and how she's feeling two years later. How are you feeling today now that this is finally over? Relieved. Beneath her sparkly necklace and warm blue eyes is a woman with a will of steel. You're a true survivor. Well, that I am. I am. I'm very proud. Two years ago, Retta Cadle spent seven hours huddled in the bathroom of her apartment at Marshall Square willing herself to live as the life she knew burned down around her. For hours, I had been screaming for someone, and they couldn't hear me. Trapped on the third floor of what was supposed to be her forever home, she watched her future get lost in smoke. What kept your mind from straying to really dark places? Oh, well, honey, it does. It, it'll go from hope to no one can hear me, so I'm desolate trying to find balance between two deadly forces, sheltering from both flames and the constant stream of water trying to extinguish it. A lot of time it was trying to figure out what was going to happen to me. Truly, I was beating on a door, on the floor, on anything that I might pass on a uh, noise to somebody that might be able to hear me. Somehow, the fire inside her burned stronger than the one that destroyed her apartment. And between going in and out of consciousness, she fought until daylight. How did you not lose hope? I don't know. I don't think I've ever lost hope in anything. Because I've had some women tell me, well, I would have gone all to pieces. I don't know how the word you did it. You would have gone all to pieces. Well, what would you have conquered by going all to pieces? But after she was rescued, a new battle began. One that crept in during the quiet of the night, growing louder in silence and shattering the peace in her mind. I told everybody I was fine. And that, that's a fact. I told everybody I was fine. But I wasn't. <laughs> I was going crazy. A prayer to forget, yet a blessing to be alive to remember, and processing grief over the loss of her cat. Oh, he was my, he was my buddy. Somehow in the sea of sadness, Retta never forgot how to smile. What kind of cat was he? He's what? just a cat cat. Just a cat cat. <laughs> and always kept her priorities straight. You know, you have some famous words when you came out of that home. You said you wanted a shower and a biscuit. <laughs> How was that biscuit? <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> Truly, that's, that's, I can remember saying that. <laughs> Don't you love her spirit? I think yes. we all yes. agree she deserved a heck of a lot more I mean, yes. than a biscuit. What a strong woman. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to hear her tell the story. You know what she credits her strength to? Raising three kids. She says <sighs> after raising it. three kids and going through everything they go through with them, mm -hmm. that in a sense trained her and, and got her to the point where she could get through something like this. But earlier this week she got much more than a biscuit. She, they reached a settlement in this lawsuit. It's confidential, so we don't know how much the company's had to pay, but she says the relief she got in just being able to put all of this behind her is priceless. Seven hours in that rubble, yeah, not knowing about the hours. next minute. Unthinkable. Hopefully she and her family will get to enjoy a lifetime of biscuits together. Yes, <laughs> yes, that is, that is definitely the hope. Great interview, that, and we love her story, Christy. Yeah. Thank you.